Hi, Mike Griffin again here, folks. Um, yesterday I had a visit from one of the members of our club here in New Orleans, and we were I was showing him this uh, this Banshee wing, which I'm building for a customer. I'm building this for somebody else, and I told him I was going to put a suspended bell crank in it. And uh, he didn't actually know what I was talking about, so I decided to come back here and show him. And then I got to thinking it might be a good subject for a short video, because I'm not sure that everybody knows what a suspended bell crank is. Um, a lot of the old timers, and I used to do the same thing when you put a bell crank into a wing in order to uh, control your your uh, elevators and everything and your flaps. You just put like two pieces of quarter inch by quarter inch, you glue it to the ribs down here about that long, and then cut out a plywood, one eighth inch plywood plate, and drill a hole in the bottom of it. And then you would bring a oh a 632 bolt up through the bottom and. Uh, uh, maybe put another washer and a nut, and then put your and then put your uh, SIG nylon bell crank on that. Put a nut on top of it, and you the bell crank just sort of sat on the plate and swivel. A suspended bell crank is an entirely different thing. Now this this bell crank here uh, is actually made by Tom Morris, but you can make these yourself if you want. This material that Tom uses is a phenolic material. I don't know exactly what the chemical composition of it is, but it's hard, self-lubricating, and it works real well, and it doesn't weigh much, and it works real well for a bell crank. Now, we all know that a bell crank has a center post that goes through there, and then you have a hole here that your, that your push rod goes into, and then the swiveling action controls the elevators. On a suspended bell crank, you have two plates like this, a uh, top and a bottom. Now, I've already glued in the bottom plate right here. But let's talk about the composition of the bell crank for a minute. What you have here is you have the bell crank body. The lead outs are already attached to this. With, they have a brass bushing here. This is .027 gauge lead out wire. And that's, that's all I use on my, on my uh, as far as the gauge goes, on my uh, bell cranks. Uh, the brass bushings are to keep it from wearing unnecessarily or ripping out the bell crank or having, worse yet, having the bell crank cut the line and then you're, you, you have a crash. But the components of this is that you take a piece of eighth inch music wire, which you see here, and you run it through the center of your, of your bell crank. Actually you have, what holds this and keeps it from falling or going up or down is that on each side of the bell crank you have a piece of fuel tubing here that's underneath a wheel collar that's underneath a washer. And then you have the same thing on the top. You have a washer, a wheel collar, and a piece of fuel tubing. And you can see there's a reveal here where I've cut the fuel tubing off so you've got enough of the music wire to go down in the hole of the top and bottom plates. So let's just, that's how you make these things. Uh, like I said, you can do it the old-fashioned way too with a, with a SIG bell crank, nylon bell crank with a, with a bolt and the nuts and, and the swivel. But once you have this in glued well, you just simply take your bell crank assembly, you build it ahead of time, and you set it down that in the hole so that that piece of eighth inch wire that's exposed goes through there. You take your top part, your top plate, and you find, you get it centered over the music wire you drop that down and then you put it down into the recesses of the ribs and glue it in place and then your bell crank is captured and it's suspended okay uh, these ribs have notches cut the right width for this piece of eighth inch plywood and you put your glue in the notches and against the spar weight it down and then you got uh, something that will very well uh, surpass the means or the needs of a pull test um, the, this, the, I like to use ball swivels, and this is a ball swivel you see right here um, uh, for the uh, uh, push rod to attach to. Some people uh, will still use OZ bin, which I guess is okay. I don't much like them. But, uh, or they can put a 90 degree bin in a piece of music wire and then put a, a solder a nut or a JB Weld a nut or a, or a uh, washer on the other side of it to hold the push rod in. I like the ball swivels and then I use these which are a titanium um, threaded 440 capture. The ones I use capture the outside of the push rod. Here's the, here is the uh, carbon fiber push rod right here. And um, you simply put a little JB weld in there, put it over the, the push rod, and then you'll screw this into here, into your ball uh, 
uh, your ball wing and it'll go in a certain distance. And the reason this one's short, because this, this, this wing has flaps. So the, the, this back end will have another one of these um, going to the flap horn. And then of course the other part of the push rod goes back to the elevator. You all know how that works. Um, there are some uh, of these ends that go down inside of the uh, holla push rod, which is okay too. I prefer these because you don't have to wrap the end of the carbon fiber push push rod to keep it from splintering. So you just put your uh, JV weld in there, push it on top, screw it into this, and then you've got your push rod assembly attached to your bell crank. Uh, don't do what I did one time and completely put the center sheeting on top and bottom and then have to think, oh, I didn't put the bell crank in. Um, I have done that, believe it or not, and had to rip the sheeting off to, to get the bell crank back in. So, or I've actually uh, heard of people who put the bell crank in and uh, forgot to put the push rod in. So, talk to Eric Rule about that. He can tell you some funny stories. Anyway, I wanted to cover this today in a short video, and I hope that helped as far as understanding what a suspended bell crank is and how it goes into a wing.